Hi, Mural. This is Sarah from Flourish at Artisan Indie, and I am critiquing your Etsy shop today, Sassy Chic Embroidery. Super stoked. I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're going to jump right in. I, I logged on to your site, and I noticed right away that you don't have a cover photo or a shop banner um, above your Etsy store. Now, what that is, is it's a huge space right here. Um, right now, everything's been moved up, so your shop icon and name and and picture has been moved up, but it's supposed to go right here. Let's go to another Flourish Members um, shop. Let's go to, we'll go to Haley's shop just to kind of show you what a cover photo is. Did I not spell it right? Okay, so this is kind of like your shop's cover photo or um, your branding, your, your shop banner. It's basically this big space where you're letting people know who land on your shop, hey, this is where you are. You're at my company, which would be what Sassy Chic Boutique. Um, and this is what you can expect to find in my shop. So like you see, Haley has Citra Lily. She has her logo and her name and her brand's colors. And then she has the tagline, favors and gifts for life's special occasions. So at, when you land in this store, you know, hey, I'm at Citra Lily and this is what I can expect to find. So as I'm scrolling, I kind of already have this assumption that I'm going to find something that has to do with um, special events. And as you can see, she takes her logo into her shop icon, so it all kind of flows really nicely. That is what you're missing out of your shop. Now let's go back into where you are. See, so automatically you don't have that nice feeling of, you know, hey, this is where I'm at. Um, and I'm talking about this from a user's experience, a cut your customer's experience. You may not think about this being a shop owner, but when a customer goes from Etsy shop to Etsy shop to Etsy shop, because that's usually what they do, right? They're looking for something and they'll go look at this in this person's shop, and then they'll go look at something else in another person's shop. Your format of your shop of, of the screen is completely different than most because you don't have that cover photo. So you definitely want to uh, enable that right away you also it's very important that you don't just throw something up there you want to make sure that you're branded properly so i i don't know if you have a logo or if you have um any kind of like social media banners or anything that you use when you sell um, whether you sell in person at a craft show or like business cards that you might um, put in with a package any kind of branding you want to make sure that your branding is consistent so that when you put a cover photo up there it needs to be in your font and your colors and your imagery all that kind of good stuff so make sure that you have that done if you don't have any branding done you may think well i just make things right i'm just crafty but you know in consistency with our um our mission from crafting to commerce uh, with with flourish we want to treat this business even though it's a craft business we want to still treat it as a business because it is and so you can compete with these larger companies easily um you, you don't have to say well i'm just you know i work at home from my dining room table or you know from my sewing room um, I don't need to have a logo. I don't need to have branding. I don't need to have, you know, these, the, these certain visual things, but you really do, uh, especially selling online. You want to be taken seriously. And now with so many people selling online, you really want to have that kind of, um, extra footing. Like you want to have that, that extra edge so that people, uh, that come to your shop, think that your shop is better than perhaps the one they were at before. So uh, definitely that's the first thing that I would say. You need your banner. It needs to be branded and, and look nice and clean. Um, Sassy Chic Embroidery. Now you are listing this, your name. See this line right here, Sassy Chic Embroidery. You're listing that underneath your shop name. This line, Etsy calls it a tagline, I believe, but what you can put in this section is keywords and this will help you as far as seo goes with with amazon i mean sorry not with amazon with google oh my goodness all my companies all right so yes with google uh so you want to put keywords like um embroidered gifts or personalized gifts or um uh, personalized uh, baby gifts I, I i don't know exactly everything that you make yeah personalized home decor 
um, beach bags and towels. So anything like that you can put in here. Whatever it is that you would say are your top keywords for your shop, I would put in this line right here. Again, that's going to help you with the search through Google. Uh, not a whole lot of, of um, extra added traffic there, but every little bit helps. All right, you're also, I, I noticed that you don't have featured items. Now featured items is, um, it, it's, it's, a, it's an added benefit that uh, Etsy gives you where you can actually display some of your favorite items or perhaps uh, some items that are uh, what are um, seasonally appropriate. So I want you to think of that area kind of like uh, a window display. Like if you had a physical store and it was summer was coming up and you sell beach towels, perhaps you would have a beach towel display up there in the window, right? So this is kind of what the featured items do. And I don't see that you have that. Let me go to another, we'll go to another flourishers. Abigail Grace Crow. Did I spell that wrong? Is it with an I? Gail Grace Crow. Yes. Okay. So this is another Flourish member. This is Gail Schmidt, and I go to her shop all the time because I'm big fan. Like quite seriously, big fan. Um, she actually just rebranded. She was Shabby Cottage Adorned. She changed it to Abigail Grace Co. because beauty is in the details. And as you see, this is her shop banner. And she has her uh, her roses here brought down into her shop icon. So she has these four items as her featured items. So this is the rest of her shop, right? These are her four featured items. So this is where you would say, like for her, perhaps right now, mint is kind of the cool color and she's showcasing her mint uh, hued kind of uh, items. But you could do anything here. You could do your featured items. You could do seasonal items. You could do items on sale, you know, whatever it is that you want to feature, you can put in that section. And what's nice about that is that that should change every couple of months, right? Every month or two, you can change them out. So it's constantly new when you have people returning to buy something else from your shop. So I would definitely enable those as well. Now I want to come down here to your shop. You have a good amount of items in your shop. 264 is fantastic. Um, that is a whole lot of items. Uh, so that is good because people are going to take you serious. They're going to say, hey, this is a shop that's been around. She's got a good amount of inventory. Um, you know, I have a lot of uh, options. So that's that's something positive that's going for you. That as well as your five stars that you're getting out of 1600 sales. So that's phenomenal. Um, this, however, do you see how this is kind of uh, choppy here? That This is something that I like to teach my clients to reorganize this section right here. These are your section titles or your category, uh, section categories. What you want to do is organize them from the smallest word to the longest word or the smallest word to the longest phrase. So kind of like a triangle, a half a triangle, it should go down like this. Now you say, what does that mean? So pillows should be first and then it looks like stuffed animals. Then it looks like beach bags and towels and so on and so forth. So instead of it going kind of in and out here, it kind of flows really nicely. And this is just going to help with the way that the eyes move uh, on the page, on the web page. It just makes things a little bit more comfortable for your user while they're looking on your page. And remember, anytime that you can have some clean, a, a nice, clean, easy to read, easy to use web page, the longer your customer is going to be in your shop. And that's what you want. You don't want somebody that's going to feel uncomfortable and then just kind of pop out of your shop. You want people to stay and kind of look around. Okay, so let's go back down here. We're going to skip over the main part of your shop. And I'm noticing a huge, uh, something huge that you're missing. You do not have an about page. So right off the bat, you're missing your banner, you're missing your featured items, and you're missing your about page, which are three ma major things in your shop to create interest, to bring in uh, traffic, to be taken seriously as a seller. So the about page, it does a few things. One, it helps you um, in search, in Etsy search. Etsy has been very clear about uh, saying that sellers that have a full, uh, a filled out full about page 
that they can get a slight bump in ranking. So that in itself would make you want to have an about page. But besides that, your customers that visit your shop, they want to know you. They're on Etsy for a reason. They're not shopping on Amazon or Walmart.com. You know, they are on Etsy for a reason. They're probably looking to buy a gift of some sort. Um, and they want it to be special. They want it to be unique. And that's why they're on Etsy. Um, they love when they can have a story paired up with an item. So, you know, you tell your story. Why are you, why do you do embroidery? What, what is it about embroidery um, that makes you happy? Like, what is it that gets you excited and inspired? And, you know, why do you do what you do? And where do you work? You know, you want to show off your, your embroidery machine. You want to show off your craft space, you know, take pictures of where you work, take pictures of the fabric that you use. Maybe um, you want to showcase uh, both in text and in pictures who you are as a person, who you are as a maker um, and what you do and why you do it. And you can do this through the about page. Now, let me go back to we'll go back to Gail's page. Uh, <clears throat> Let me go down to her about section and I can at least show you an example. Okay, see it says about and here she has a little bit of text and it's kind of her story why she does what she does. She says thanks for stopping by and then these are pictures. <laughs> There's Gail. Pictures of her making her jewelry, the finished product, some tools and materials and you can put a video here as well. You don't just have to put photos, not that everybody would want to make a video, but you can put a video there and just simply tell people who you are, which is kind of cool too. Um, so definitely add that in. I think that will help you a lot. Uh, let's go back up to your shop. Okay, your pricing is a little all over the place. You're using a, a 95 cent price point here. You're using whole pricing here. Uh, you're, you're using a half uh, pricing here, 50 cent price price point there. Uh, this is whole. Okay, so with your pricing, you want to be consistent in the end number. So you're using 59.95 here, which is great. Then this should be 29.95, and this should be 34.95. Do you see what I mean? So you want to keep that 95 cent price point consistent throughout. You can also use 99 cents. So $59.99, $29.99, $34.99, um, that's fine too. You just want to be consistent. I would not recommend whole, whole pricing. It's fine at craft fairs and events where you don't want to give out change and things like that. But honestly, um, if you follow the psychological pricing model, which most, if you go to any retailer, I mean, go to Starbucks even, and you'll see it's $3.95 for a cup of coffee or $8.95. Um, you know, it's it it there is something that encourages people to um, feel better about their purchase, even if it's just a cent off. So um, at ninety nine cents, five ninety nine still feels better than six dollars. OK, so remember, we talk a lot about feeling in Flourish and about how the customer uh, experiences the shopping process. And, and the reason why we do that is because you know, it's something that we don't notice, but when we're out shopping and buying things, believe it or not, a lot of our purchases are emotional and they're based on our emotions and our feelings and our visualizing of what we're going to do with that item or how we're going to gift that item or whatever it is. So it, it goes all the way through the buying process. So changing this to 95 cents um, and, and keeping it consistent. So, I mean, where all of these are 95 cents would be better for you. With that, you also want to make sure that you are receiving, um, oh, sorry, that was the wrong one. You also wanna make sure that you are pricing in certain price points as well. So not just the cents at the end, but for example, anything under $10 can, can be in dollar increments. So 9.99 or 9.95, 8.95, 7.95, all the way down. But above that, 9.95 to $20, let's say, should go in basically $2 increments up towards the end, and then it changes a little. So it, it, the best prices to price would be 
$9.99 and then $12.99 and then $14.99 then $16.99 and then that jumps to $19.99. There's some funny reason why 17 and 18 aren't good. Um, so make sure that you're doing that and then go in $5 increments. So perhaps $19.95 then $24.95 then $29.95, $34.95, so on and so forth. Uh, so for example, this would be $34.95, this would be $44.95, this would be $29.95, $29.95, or $24.95, depending. Uh, this could be $14.99, uh, $29.99, $34.99, so, so on and so forth. It's going to make the items in your shop look a lot more consistent. Um, it's not going to kind of be all over the place like 74 and 20 and 15 and 25 and 35. I mean, it's just your pricing is kind of all over the place. So it just kind of makes it look a little bit more uh, put together. Your photos. Let's talk about your photos. I would say that the most opportunity that you have is with your photos. If you're selling with these photos, I can only imagine what kind of sales you would do with professional photos. So you see this beautiful photo right here. I love this, such a cute photo. I would remove the watermark at least for your first photo. I know that people are worried about other people stealing their photos, but I promise, uh, you know, with, with basic photo editing software, I can remove this super easy. Um, and so if I wanted to steal your photo, I would do it whether you had the watermark on there or not. What you're doing is you're creating um, this kind of busyness or distraction by having this here. And the person that's viewing the photo is not getting the full benefit of the photograph. So you want to make sure that you do not have watermarks on your front pictures. I would just remove them all together. It will make it harder to see your items in search. Um, some search engines won't even show photos that have watermarks on the, on them, on the, on the, the main picture. Um, so I would definitely remove all of those. And then as far as your photography in general, the lighting is way off. It needs to be a, kind of a natural light, think light and bright, maybe a soft white light. Um, there needs to be a lot more consistency. If it's something that you're not really super strong in, I would reach out maybe to a product photographer, see if you can get some modeled shots. Maybe you could put together a campaign where you're uh, asking your customers to send you photographs of the items in use or of the items when they get them. And, you know, if you end up getting a photo that you love, that, you know, maybe you'll give them a, a a gift certificate for $10 in your shop or $20 in your shop or something if you use their photo. Um, there's lots of ways that you can go about it. Uh, I would definitely not photograph your items on this background, whatever this background is. I don't know if it's vinyl or if it's real wood. I definitely would um, have this be more not yellow. So you don't want that yellow brownish color. You don't want the lines. You don't want the rivets. You want kind of more of a nice neutral uh, light color. So maybe a cream, um, maybe an ivory, maybe even a white. Just something um, soft and light. Your lighting, I don't know if you're taking it indoors or what, but you wanna have, let me see if I can find a good example. Let's go for embroidered baby let's look for a embroidered baby gown let me see if i can find a better example oh i was looking in your shop hang on a minute here we go do, do, do. and this is what's so good this is a pretty decent fit picture here What's cool is, as you can see, a lot of people take poor photos on Etsy. And so why that's good is because if you can get your photos to be better than most other people, most other sellers, and that's what we really push you to do um, within Flourish, it's, it's going to give you that edge that we were talking about. It's going to give you that extra you know, lift up to where people are going to go, oh my gosh, even though it may be the same bodysuit, it may be, you know, the same type of embroidery or the same font, they're going to choose to go with yours versus somebody else's. 
I'm not really seeing any amazing examples of photography. If I did, I would point it out to you. I mean, some are okay, but they're just not where, none of these are really where they need to be. No. I would probably go, I'm gonna go to Ink and Elm, which is one of my favorite shops on Etsy. They sell vinyl backdrops. Um, as you can see, they offer, all of these are vinyl um, backdrops. And I would go with something that's kind of, let's see if I can find solid color maybe. Oh my gosh, look at the cute little baby. Imagine if you had that, that little baby with this background and then an embroidered outfit on, how cute that would be. See, even something like this, where it's a solid color, it's white, but it's a soft white, not like a bright fake white. Um, or even if you had, you know, something that was colored, but still kind of a light color, not anything too dark or harsh. Uh, let's see if I can find, there's, I have a favorite one in here, but they sell so many. I don't want to take forever going through it. See, and I love, as, as cool as all these wood backdrops are, they're just... <laughs> They're too busy with all the lines and it distracts when you're looking in a shop and you're scrolling up, it just becomes very distracting. And if you don't have all the lines uh, lined up correctly, then it looks even worse. See, this is nice. Now here's a wood backdrop, but it doesn't have a whole lot of busyness. It's still light and bright. It still gives you that nice kind of um, uh, shabby chic kind of feeling but it doesn't have a ton of lines in it so that's way better um, so maybe get something like that and look you're looking at twenty dollars for three feet by two feet which isn't bad at all especially because a lot of your items are small you could do something like this um, I had a favorite one in here but I'm not seeing it oh right here this is my favorite just because the lines are so blurred you know, so it's not super busy. So that just gives you some example of some backdrops that you can use. Let's see. Let's get back here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to talk about your SEO for just a minute. I do notice that you are using some, um, like frozen inspired. You have to be careful. The word frozen itself is not obviously copyrighted, right? Like it's the word, it's a, it's a word, frozen. But because you're using it in conjunction with, it's saying that it's inspired by, you got to be careful with that because you can, it could be considered as infringement on someone else's property. You have to be really careful. Um, you don't want to. You don't want to use words like um, Frozen or Elsa or Anna or um, you know Disney or anything like that because it could get your listing suspended and ultimately get your short your store shop uh, your your shop shut down. So that's not really you know super worth it. I think you'd be much better off. Um, you know, titling this as it is um, and saying like for a little girl, a little girl nap mat or a little girl knapsack or something like that or a nap mat for, for, a, little, for a little girl um, because that's more than likely what people are going to search for. They're going to see it and they're going to think frozen because of the colors, but it's not like you're actually trying to sell it based off of those words. So you have frozen inspired personalized nap mat, uh, frozen nap mat preschool nap mat. So you're using a lot of backslashes. You have all of these all together. I recommend titling your, uh, or using the format for your title as keyword or keyword phrase space dash space. So you have frozen inspired personalized. And as you see, as I'm typing, it's not coming up because nobody's typing that in. That means nobody is using that as a search term to find this item. So if I'm a mom and I am a mom and I'm looking for a nap mat, 
I, for my daughter, I'm going to probably put nap mat for, there it is, look, nap mat for girls. Click on nap mat for girls and what comes up? Nap mat for girls. Let's see, maybe a nap set. Nope. Um, nope. Let me type in nap and see what comes up. Nap mat with pillow and blanket, which is awesome. Nap mat color, cover, nap mat girl. See all of these that come in, do you see all these that, that are auto-populating, what we call auto-populate? The search bar is auto-populating these phrases. That means that these phrases are being searched for by the users, right? So when you type that in, let's try girls. Yep, girls nap mat. So now you have girls nap mat, space dash space, nap mat for girls, space dash space, Let's try pink, pink nap mat. There you go. Um, is it like a sleeping bag? Maybe you could even use that. You have personalized nap, personalized nap mat right there. Personalized nap pillow, kid's name. So you can use those keywords. They're gonna be a lot better for you than using this all together. Okay. You want to make sure that down in your tags, you're also using the same keywords that you're using here in your title. It's important that you do have that repetition, at least as far as titles and tags go for now. And in your description, I would try to make sure that you're also working in your keywords that you're using in your title in the description. That'll help you with SEO on Etsy, at least until we know that anything major has changed. So there you go. Honestly, you make super cute, adorable things, like seriously adorable things. And you should be, you know, making six figures or more a year doing what you're doing with this. Of course, you would then have to hire help, I'm sure. Um, you just really need to get your shop ready. Uh, it needs to be visually appealing. It needs to attract your target audience. It needs to, you know, the pictures need to just come off of your site like, oh my gosh, I could see my cute little baby girl wearing that or I could see my you know, niece using this um, for school or whatever it is and you're not selling it. Like you're showing, hey, this is what I make and this is what I do. You know, hey, I'm an embroiderer. I can embroid things and I can personalize things. This is what you can get. But you're not selling it, right? You need to sell it and you do that by having amazing branding, amazing photos, text that reads really well, um, and explaining your titles, you know, wording your titles in a more appropriate way um, for the item. So I hope that helps. You have a lot of work to do for sure, but that's good because that just means you do have a lot of opportunity for growth and for sales. Um, I, I really am here to help you along the way. If you have any questions at all, please know you can always respond back to this critique. I'm going to send it to your Etsy combo. Um, and of course, you're, I believe you are in Flourish, so you can always ask us a question or tag an expert in our Facebook groups or on our member site. And if you allow this to be publicly viewed on YouTube and others are watching, you are more than welcome to learn more about Artisan Indie at www artisanindie.com and please subscribe so that I can share a lot more of these awesome shop critiques. Thanks so much guys. Bye-bye.